Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to another video on my channel. If you were here the last time I uploaded a video, you may remember that I said I was going to work on a new project that had nothing to do with the cardboard castle. However, as you can see, I did not upload a video last week because that project I'm working on took me a lot longer than I thought I was going to. I'm still actually working on that project, so it's not going to be this video. As you can see from the thumbnail, in the title, I am using recycled material to make the tables that are going into my castle project. From the very beginning, I knew I wanted to use as much recycled material as I could because I wanted to use things like cardboard and, you know, paper towel roll holders and and egg cartons and, and pasta boxes and Girl Scout cookie boxes. So I knew I needed to try and get that going. <laughs> Luckily, I do have some Playmobil toys that are 124th scale, if you didn't know this, that uh, Playmobil is actually 124th scale. So when it came time to figure out how tall they needed to be, how thick, instead of measuring things out, trying to do conversions, I kind of just compared it to a table that I already had. I couldn't use these because they look like plastic, but I could use them as a guide. And that's what I did. So I took the Girl Scout cookie boxes and I made them into tables, as you're about to see. Without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump into the video so you can see what I created. I started off by sanding the boxes. So I did the Girl Scout boxes, the pasta boxes. This is something that I learned from many channels. I, I think the first person I saw do it was Bentley House Minis because she's the one that works with recycled material. So I knew from her that if I didn't do this, it would not glue well together. Something I did not know though, which is a word of warning, is that when you sand these, there are little tiny dust particles kind of that will come off. I was wearing a mask because I, you know, when you're sanding, you should wear a mask. I didn't know what this material was. But what I didn't know was that the weird little dust material, it came off and at one point it actually like smeared on one of my sweaters. It came out, but I don't know if it would come out of all material. So just something to keep in mind is that when you're sanding things that have color like this, that maybe, I don't know if I should have uh, wiped it down with some kind of wet cloth afterwards or what, but I just wanted to warn you just in case you're doing this that you don't ruin any of your clothing. Looking back after sanding, I probably should have cut these down to the size I needed them first because then I wouldn't have had to sand all the different parts of the box, even the parts I wasn't using. But honestly, I wasn't thinking about it. And I was just like, I need to sand this. So when you're doing this, maybe just cut down the pieces that you need and sand those only. It'll save you some time. After sanding and cutting, I started to glue them together. I am an over gluer, which I feel like when it comes to gluing together boxes like this, you really need that. But as you'll see later, I should have spread the glue out which I do when I'm gluing together the Girl Scout boxes because these, they globbed and started to warp at one point, which I ended up correcting, but definitely spread out the glue. And I'm an over gluer. So honestly, it could be my fault, but I didn't want them falling apart. Spoiler alert, later, they kind of come apart when I'm painting anyway, and I had to use more glue in the moment. It was, it was a lot. After all the glue, I put something on to weigh it down. This was not enough to weigh it down, so later just, I use more. Just make sure you're using a good amount of weight. Here's where I busted out the Playmobil toys. Again, they are 124th scale, so if you ever need to compare something and you want to make something 124th scale, just get a lot of old Playmobil toys on eBay or something and you can compare them. I noticed very quickly that the table was not thick enough, so I cut up this old like face shaving razor box to thicken it up because this was slightly thicker than the Girl Scout boxes and the pasta boxes. So I knew it would add a little bit of more thickness that I needed. I started to piece together pieces of different boxes to add to the next layer of thickness, like the razor box and the Girl Scout cookie boxes, because I knew that the bottom didn't really necessarily matter as much as the top of the table. I wanted it to look like one cohesive piece on top, However, on the bottom, it didn't really matter if there was a line. And I ended up getting a line on the top of two of my tables that I ended up fixing anyway. But I really wanted to use as much as I could recycling material. So I didn't want to throw away anything if I, if I could help it. So when it came down to it, I was using boxes of all kinds of shapes and sizes. At this point, I had learned my lesson. And even though I still over glue, because I will always be an over gluer, I did use a, piece, a scrap piece of box to spread the glue out. So it was covering every little bit of the box I could get while out without bubbling because that was an issue, like I said, with the warping. And as you're about to see, I use a lot more books and I use the Plaster Paris. I used a lot of weight on top of this so it would not warp or, and I wanted to correct the warping that was going on. I used the table to try and cut three tables length out of this 
square I'd made. However, I realized very quickly that I did not have enough, so I did make the table slightly skinnier than the actual Playmobil table, but not by much. I just needed it a little bit smaller on each one so I could fit three, because I wanted to get as many as I could out of this without having to eat more pasta and Girl Scout cookies. I thought I had gotten a clip of this, but it either got lost or I never did, but I was trying to make legs out of the boxes as well. However, I was really struggling. They were not looking right. They were coming out different sizes and falling apart. So I decided to break out my art bin, which is full of all my wood stuff. And I found these wooden dowels, not dowels. I keep calling them dowels. They are spindles, spools, spools. That's the word that I'm looking for. And I thought they would look like little intricate carved legs. And I really like how they turned out. So I added the legs to the tables and then I decided to add planks to the top. I did this after adding the band to the top, which was a mistake. And honestly, I maybe should have cut these apart and re-glued them together to get the gaps between the boards to make it look more realistic. But I honestly had not even thought about it. I don't know what I was thinking. I, it was very obvious very quickly that a giant slab would not look like real wood. So I went in with the pen and tried to add the little gaps between the wood pieces manually. I was nervous that maybe it wouldn't show up once I painted it because I thought maybe the, the pen wouldn't dig deep enough. So I did take out my X-Acto knife and try to carve in. However, it was kind of thin, so I don't know what I would do going back. I think if I started over, I would maybe cut these apart and glue them back together, although that seems like a lot of work just because this did not cut very deep and it cut in a very thin line, which doesn't really, it doesn't emphasize the gaps between the boards big enough for what I wanted in the end. I have a dog that's prone to getting tangles in his hair. So we have this detangling brush. It's one of many we have and he hates this one. Hates it, hates it, hates it. So I decided to use it to add little wood grain because I do not have a wire brush, which I know probably would have worked really well, but this ended up work working really well too. I try to show you at one point, but it's kind of hard to see on camera how tiny and intricate it is. But when you're working in 1 24th scale, I knew that it would be hard to see anyway because the scratches are very tiny. However, in the end, I think that it, it, and it added something. So it definitely needed the wire brush, even though you won't necessarily be able to see it in this part. Next, I use Black Magic Crafts black paint mixed with Mod Podge because I wanted a dark undertone for the woods. So that way it would look really old and I knew that the Mod Podge would help glue together the different layers of the boxes, especially around the edges where I, you know, had been cutting it, digging at it, so that way I'd have gouges and things. I needed something that would hold it together and really harden it to be one solid piece. So that's why I went with this mixture, which I think is just a brilliant invention. I don't know if he invented it, but it's the first time I ever heard of it. I hear a lot of people refer to him as his concoction, and it's brilliant. You'll have to excuse the fact that I'm a very messy painter. This might bother some people, but I do get the paint all over my hands and it's it's an issue, I know that. But I decided to do the bottoms as well because some of the layers were kind of separating because this is four layers of recycled material. And so the wooden dowels, not dowels, I keep saying that, the wooden spools kept separating some of the layers. The I think it maybe had to do with the saturation of paint, that it was too wet. And so the bottom layer was kind of detaching. The wooden spool kept attached to it, but it kept separating the actual layer. So I did do the bottom as well to kind of cement them together. So if you watched last week's video, you may know that I had a little bit of a panic attack while painting. And I will say that so far, I have not had one and that I'm very proud of myself for uh, where I've gotten. I know that this isn't much painting yet and the painting, the real painting, is the next step, but I can't help but uh, feel like I'm I'm starting off on a better foot than I was last time. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the painting and fingers crossed that it turns out the way I want it to. I really would like to get a better camera set up at some point so you can see what I'm doing better from a top-down view, but here I've started doing the brown base coat. I at first was putting on too little and so I started putting on more to kind of cover up a lot of the black because I did want the black undertones and I did want it to peek through a little bit, but I needed a majority of the color to still be brown. So I went with this darker brown. I don't remember what color it is. I think it might just be called dark brown. And I covered everywhere, top, bottom, legs, everything in this color. Before this video, dry brushing and I were mortal enemies, but I actually really like how it turned out in this video. So I guess we're on better terms than we used to be. I'm not 100% still on dry brushing. I know it makes everything look better, but me personally, I just struggle with it. 
Something that I wish I had gotten on camera that I guess I forgot and I apologize is the two bands around the tables are meant to look like the iron that held the boards together on medieval tables. And as you'll see, I skipped the video or I the video file got corrupted. I think I may have lost a couple of video files for this, so I apologize, but all I did was just paint it in a gray color. In the future, I wanna add rust maybe to it, but I am a little nervous about that because the, it's the finer details I struggle with. That's it. You may hear some clicking clacking. That's my dog walking around. His nails are short and yet they still click and clack. We have like faux hardwood. But I am very happy with how they turned out. I think that they look to me very Dungeons and Dragon-y. I feel like these are ones that I could see like, they're obviously too big for tabletop miniature figures. Those are 28 millimeter and they would just look like maybe if they had entered a house of giants and this was the giant's table, these would be much too big, but they kind of remind me of that. I, I watch a lot of videos of people making tabletop terrain and tabletop things, and I feel like these look a lot like that. I'm very happy with how they turned out. I really like them. I'm gonna turn around the camera in a second so you can see what they look like in the actual room. But overall, I think me and dry brushing are having like a renaissance because I, it went way better than my previous videos. I'm gonna go ahead and turn you around though so you can see what they look like. Here are some other Playmobil figurines I have that are just kind of ones I'm using as size references. The king and just a random one, you know, things like that. But when these are in here, it's a little dark because I don't think I'm gonna put any lights into this because of how this is set up. I just don't know how I could put lights in that would look natural. So I'm gonna use natural light. This isn't gonna be against the wall. <laughs> but I have the one head table and the two side tables. So I have not yet made the benches because that'll really help fill out this room as well. There'll be two benches here, one here, one here. And then I think for this back table, I'm thinking about doing chairs instead since it's the head table. I originally wanted to have more tables in this and I f quickly realized they would not fit. My only thing is they might be slightly out of scale. They do look a little tall compared to him. This one is actually the exact same size as the plastic one. I'm okay with it. It's fine. When he's not even there, you can't even tell. It looks perfect. I think this project, because I'm working with a lot of materials I haven't worked with before, it's teaching me to really just like be happy with what I have done and be proud of what I'm doing rather than hyper-focusing. I say that now, but last week's video was not that at all. But I think I'm learning as I'm going, as I'm getting further into this project to really just embrace the chaos that comes with new material and using recycled material because it's so interesting to me that I could have bought matte board and made this, yes. And would it have been easier? Yes, it would have already been the right thickness. But I just prevented, and it's not much, you know, a few boxes of Girl Scout cookies. I mean, I definitely bought four boxes, but that's, that's neither here nor there. But it's just interesting using recycled materials because this is stuff that would have ended up in a landfill. And even though it's not a lot, it's just cool to think like I saved it from a landfill. But that just was, I, I, I enjoy working with recycled materials. It's, it's interesting, it's a challenge, but it's fun. That's all I have for you this week. As always, if you have any comments or suggestions for the room, please comment them below. I would love to see any suggestions because still a work in progress and there's still plenty of time to change things. The other project I'm working on may go up next week and may go up the week afterwards. It just depends. It is taking me much longer than I thought. I do plan to have that coming out soon. And I actually feel like I'm getting really far along in this castle build. I'm shocked by how quickly it's coming together considering I took so much time off in between making the box and the rest of it that the fact that it's all going together so quickly now is very shocking. I have so many plans for the future, so many other miniatures to make up for this channel, so I'm not worried about that at all. If you like the video, make sure you hit the like button below. And if you love the video, hit the subscribe button below. And until my next video, I will see you later. Goodbye.